Life Legacy and Leadership Podcast. I'm David Pate, the podcast guy here at Brook Hill, and I'm here today with the Maley Glass. The. Uh, the I call her the Goat. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But she was a camper in the early '90s, uh, late '90s. You were a JC, and then '01 to '04, you were all summer staff, AC, senior counselor. Right. She did it all, and I, I call her the GOAT. Maybe you were the GOAT because you changed the way that girls' staff came about. I mean, you, you came on the scene, and girls used to have this thing where, and no disrespect to anybody in the past, but you know the guys are always like, this was my bunkhouse. I right. had Mustangs. Yeah. That's where you were for life, you right. know, the pride. And the girls kind of had the top of the hill thing where they, they moved their ways. I mean, it's just the way that they did it. Yeah. But Maylee comes on the scene and just totally changes it up and says, I'm a Percheron. <laughs> this is what I am. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just changed the way that things were. Well, we were just at a place where it needed to change in terms of, um, like you said, the guy staff, they were just cool. And they yeah. had jokes and they were funny and they um, had traditions and things and, and their relationships were different. They were tight, um, long-term relationships. And so... Uh, kind of coming into camp, seeing that as a young all summer staff, and then wanting to see that as a senior counselor, and how do I make that happen? How can I make? I want our, I want the girls' hill to be just as fun and just right. as, and for young girls to want to come and be a senior counselor with us because we were a tight knit group and had fun, and and not just oh let's look at the guy counselors and they do all the fun things, but to have a a lot of creativity and a and a major part in that, and, and two just with um friendships. You know, I wanted that. I wanted those friendships that were those lifelong friendships that um, you know, people can look up to and, and want to be a part of. And so it was, um, it was, it was primed for that. It was ready for it already. Yeah. I don't know that I, you know, so the only one that made it happen, I had a great group that was with me that kind of changed it with me, you know, and I just got to happen to get to be the leader during those times. And so and it was awesome. It was a really, yep. really fun. Well, culturally, things were changing also, you know, not just Brookhill culture, but, you know, in our world, things were yeah. changing around that time. And, and uh, you know, it had always been the guys that did morning devotions. And you kind of came on the scene and really started doing morning devotions. And, and you were hilarious. I mean, we just, we would just laugh out loud funny. You know, my daughter is 16 now, Olivia. And she's an AC this summer, and I'm always like, you're you're like Maylee. I mean, she legit. I'm I like double over laughing at her. I'm like, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And that just reminded me of you. You just you were just so comedic, and and of course the girls gravitated. That the guys thought this girl's so funny, you know. And it just I don't know. I just love the legacy that you left here. Well, it was so fun. I remember being a camper um, and watching Simon and Steve Roberts and James Pirtle do Aggie Mo softball. Yes. And I remember as a little kid watching them, I mean, it was better than any comedy show on TV. Yeah. It was, they were so funny Fun. and they had it down pat. And I know that Brook Hill is, it's more than, it's obviously the spiritual depth of Brook Hill is more, but that's how you get kids hooked in. That's what hooked me in was how much fun they were, how much they enjoyed life, how cool they were. And then they loved God and they followed Christ. That's what Brook Hill's all about. And That's so I wanted hook. that. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted that for the girls. It was right. how can we be that for young girls to hook them in the same way these guys are doing it? So I took over Aggie Mo softball and, and, and morning devotions and the things that we did and just on Girls Hill, how much fun that we had. And because um, I wanted that same hook for young girls to see and to think, wow, they're so fun, they're so cool, and they love God and love Christ, and they're good people. And, and like you said, culturally, things are changing. And that's a great thing about Brook Hill is that Brook Hill doesn't change the core of it, but at sure. the same time, you see the shift in culture. Even today, you'll see shift in what's going on in our world, and, and Brook Hill's adapting uh, along with keeping that vision of Brook Hill. It's been there for what, 50 years. Yeah. So. I just remember Aggie Mo. You, you talk about Aggie Mo. I remember you. You wore the tutu. Yeah. Yeah. You had the pink tutu. Oh man, it was whatever costume we could find and dumb glasses. And <laughs> oh, we ended up going way too long. It finally got to where the rules of the game took up the entire Aggie Mo um, activity. I think finally Stephen Sexton was like, "You've got to, 
you got to cut it down at least like 10 minutes. The not kids got to actually 45. play. Yeah, we didn't play hardly at all. I was loving it, you yeah, know, and they yeah. were having a great time. But yeah, tutus and glasses and uh, just acting like a complete nut and had a you know a team of, of great people who wanted to be dumb and have fun with us. And so it was. it's really cool to get to do those things that – the things that connected you and that hooked you to get to do the exact same thing and um, know that you're making connections in the same way. Something as dumb as Aggie Mouse softball, yeah. you know. But. Which is so Brook Hill. I mean, yeah. the original Hetty, I always say Brook Hill 101, Hetty yeah. created the book. Yeah. And that was her. She just total entertainment, you know, and she would tell a story or dress up funny yeah. or cause a scene. And so, you know, really you're just coming back in with the original. Right. Learn of, from the best. Yeah. I, I was a, a camper in third grade watching her uh, tell stories and do characters and dress up. I, I got to be in her home just a few minutes ago and I brought all three of my sons with my husband that I met here at Brook Hill Ranch and, um, and, you know, just got choked up because uh, I was sitting there with her and we're having a conversation and and my kids see like a um, a baseball glove type of thing. It's like a sticky mm -hmm. uh, tennis ball and they get it out. And I'm thinking, oh, no, she, you know, she probably should get, put that up. But what does Hetty do? She gets one out, too, and starts Absolutely. playing with them Absolutely. in the middle of the living room. And I think, man, that's. That's so her, and she mm -hmm. she is the core of Brook Hill because that's what Brook Hill is. It's not telling a kid, put that down, we're having an adult conversation. It was picking that up and continuing on that conversation and, and continue to do that. And so it just was cool to see, like, yeah, that's what that's what this is about. It's bringing kids in, drawing them in with the dumbest, silliest stuff instead of looking at them and saying, no, what you're doing is not appropriate and what you're doing is not okay. You need to sit down, you need to do this. It's no, let's have fun and find out who you are and talk about God at the same time. That's it. Being silly. That's camp. Yeah. Camp is all about having fun, being yourself, being yeah. silly. And I just think we need that today. Oh, man. Kids growing up too fast and not just not being silly. Yeah, we'll look at pictures, and you've probably seen that before, like what you looked like in middle school, and then like what kids look like now sure. in middle school, that sure. they are, they look so grown up, you know, where we just looked so dumb. I remember making hemp ne necklaces in my bunkhouse, yeah. and friendship bracelets, and just kind of being a kid, and so I think it's vital that kids can come here and be kids again. Come on. And that's where Christ meets them. That's you right. know, I mean, think about who Christ was, and how he asked for the children to come to him, and, mm -hmm. and, and encourage all of us to be like children, you yep. know, in that same way, and so why are we trying to make kids in our world grow up quicker where, you know, here's a place where um, we get to bring them to who they are and and then show them Christ at the very core of who, who that is. And, and that's the amazing part of it. And I still get to do, you know, that's as a career even, you know, I loved being a counselor so much that I made a career out of it and went and got a master's in counseling and worked with youth and adolescents. And um, I've been raising my boys now for about 10 years at home, which sure. I've loved, but um, use those th same things, you know, where uh, in counseling, a lot of what you do is you play. We're playing in a sandbox. We're swinging on a swing. We're walking. We're um, drawing together. And while we're doing that, I'm asking them questions and we're talking. They have no idea we're doing therapy. Come on. And it's the exact same thing for these senior counselors, these JCs. They're over there playing a game. They're at hodgepodge. They've got water balloons or fishing dock. But it's not just fishing. They're talking to these kids. They're getting to know them and finding out more about them. It's it's therapy. It's life changing. It's cool to see. Just it's the exact same thing I was doing. I just wanted to make a career out of it. You know. So you've never stopped being a counselor. I no, mean, no. You've never gotten rid of the red T-shirt. Never. And so I, you why went would in. You? you went to college. Got your degree. Yeah. In counseling. In psychology. Tell, tell a little bit about that. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, you know, it was, and um, they finally kicked us out and said we can't come back <laughs> as counselors. We got to go get a real job. Um, yeah, went and got an undergraduate in psychology, and then after that got a master's in, in mental health counseling. Wow. And um, yeah, and I knew children and adolescence was what I wanted to do, um, and because it was a you're good at it. Well, and it's it's a good fit for me. And kids know that I like them. You know, when you're around kids and you genuinely like them, they know it. Um, sure. They can tell. It's almost like a dog can tell like a good person, bad sure. person. Kids know it, and so they know that I like them and I want to be around them and enjoy them and. Um, and even just being now being a state, I don't say just, but being a stay at home mom sure. now, um, you need to do that with my own kids and disciple them and their friends. You know, we want to be the house that they all come to and hang come out on. in. And um, so, yeah, it was it was wanting to make a career out of what I learned at Brook Hill and taking that and doing the same thing. And I can remember my first job as a counselor, um, you know, getting that same feedback of, you know, how do you do that? How do you get kids to talk to you? How do you? Um, so people were asking you these they were questions wanting to know. just like ever all, you know, yeah. just like. 
Mitchell, and I want to talk about Mitchell here in a minute, yeah. but they're asking him as a dentist, how are you doing that? Right. How and do you get these kids to do these things? It was almost like you had a magic power. Right. And we go all the, all the time, go back to, I've learned it from Brook Hill. I learned how to talk to them. You know, I learned how to ask them their dog's name and their favorite activity. It's the, it's the silly, s- simple questions that open up a door. Um, and the life changing impact that can come after that is, uh, it's amazing to see, amazing to see kids open up. They may have never gotten asked these questions before, you know, or had people, maybe besides their family who genuinely care about them. And, um, I felt that as a camper and, and was honored enough to get to do that and then chose to do it as a career. <laughs> so, Come on. yeah, I never, never wanted to stop. So, so married with kids, tell us a little bit about yeah, your family okay. met and married here. That's right. So, um, I was a lifetime brook killer, started in the third grade, was saved, Watching the crucifixion. Wow. Yeah. Watching the crucifixion. I asked Christ into my heart. Um, but obviously, like many salvation stories, it wasn't until really junior high that I started to make it my own. Sure. Um, and felt God uh, asking me those questions of, you know, either you're going to follow me or not. And, um, you know, I come come from a family where addiction has uh, run rampant in my wow. family. And so to be the, you know, the only one pretty much who hasn't had to deal with addiction and who hasn't had to um, have those same struggles. It came from Brook Hills cool. because of my choices I made at Brook Hill and the foundations there. And, um, and then two week when I got old enough to come to the two week session, uh, started making friends that I saw every year. The same kids would come back every year to the two week. And so uh, we made sure to write letters throughout the year. And, and one of those kids was a really cute, tall guy that had okay. this like long flippy hair and wore um, umbro shorts and tall white socks. And yep. um, there was something different about him. Sure. So we became friends and um, then started working camp together. And, uh, you know, he I knew I knew he was the one. We started dating my first year as a senior counselor. So Come right on. after I graduated high school, started dating and dated a long time <laughs> throughout college, <laughs> long distance. Um, and then yeah, got married and and have three beautiful sons. And we live in Texas and um, just couldn't be happier. It's a it's pretty special to be married to another Brook Hill counselor. Sure. Um, like I've said before, it's uh a bonding experience unlike any other kind of like being in the military or being in a, a group where you've gone through a lot together. Uh, we as counselors go through a lot together with spiritual warfare and fun times and hard things and serious conversations and sharing the, the things that happen with the kids in the cabin or whatever. Uh, it's a bond unlike any other, you know, to be able to see other counselors and pick up right where you left off because you've been through something together that's uh, almost indescribable. You can't, can it, you know, when you ask somebody, have you ever been to camp? They understand they've been to camp, but especially at Brook Hill, mm-hmm. and they understand it. And so to be married to somebody who, um, have watched his spiritual journey through being a counselor and, uh, and have that same bond and still have that same heart. And like you said, he's a, a kid's dentist. And I mean, it, it's awesome to watch him. He's really good at what he does. And, and also with the parents, he knows how to do it all. And I know that's because, because of Brook Hill and learned mm-hmm. that from, from here. And, um, so we still get to do what we love in, in different ways, which is really fun. I love that because I, I want to have you and Mitchell on here together yes. at some point. Um, and, and, but, but both of you basically are still camp counselors. Oh, absolutely. And in many ways, even with our friends, kids, and, um, you know, they just kind of flock to us cause they know we like them and everything that we do. And it's not just the kids aspect of it. It's the work ethic. Um, we both learned how to, when you see a need, take care of it. Don't wait till you're asked. Don't tire of repetition. Um, how to follow many types of leaders. You know, we were under a lot of different leadership, sure. whether it was uh, Stephen Sexton as a camp director or maybe as a young JC and you had senior counselors over your ACs that maybe didn't know what they were doing. And you still had to follow and learn how to how to follow leaders that were still learning themselves. And so it's work ethic. It's, it's um, you know, how to talk to people. It is... Uh, so many aspects of our work life and, and in our relationship. It's it's the core of our marriage is the things that we've learned from Brook Hill and from what was being poured into us. And that's the thing about Brook Hill. It's not just the counseling aspect of it. It's discipleship. When you think about, you know, the Great Commission in Matthew, Christ's last words, what were they? They were to go make disciples of all nations. Okay. And how did Christ do that? He taught 12. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And then from there, those 12 were to go out. He, it, he, yeah, he spoke to the masses, but his core were those 12 men. And that's what Brookhill does, that mm. we had somebody speaking into our lives, discipling us. Then we were able to do that with other people, and they were able to do that with other people. And so to be able to live out the Great Commission, and that's a huge part of Mitchell and I, our heart uh, in ministry, our heart and everything that we do is how do we disciple people? Um, because that's that's all that it is, it, and it's going on and on and on. And so to be living out the Great Commission on a day to day basis, even as a, an adult, um, you know, yeah, it's hard to leave Brook Hill and you miss it, but you're doing it. You're you're continuing to do it and living out that Great Commission and making disciples in a lots of different ways, which is. Which is exciting. I love that. I love that because, you know, Steve and I were talking about this, had Steve on the podcast, and and we were talking about, you know, Hetty always challenged us to make your own Brook Hill, you yeah. know, and, and she didn't mean go make your own summer camp. Right. But she was just saying, basically, Steve and I have talked about it like this, of don't let Brook Hill be your best moment. Right. Don't let this be the peak. That's right. Yeah, this is your jumping off point. It's your beginning, your foundation. It's the equipping center for all the things you're going to do next. That's right. Yeah. And that's what it has been for us. It's, it was the equipping center for everything we've done. It wasn't, and it still isn't, looking back and saying, oh, man, that was, if I could only go back, I don't think I could be a counselor for a week. I really don't know that no. I could do it. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I know I, I, know I couldn't. I mean, I could I, do a day. I, maybe, <laughs> maybe a day, then I'd be ready to go. Registration, but, yeah, and then that night, that's right. it. <laughs> we'll see. But, um, but it is, it was an equipping center. It's not looking back and saying, man, I wish, oh, I'd want to go back. It was wonderful, but it was it was the equipping center for the rest of our lives, for our marriage. We went to marriage seminars, you know, uh, with uh, our other camp counselor friends every single year, first five years of our marriage to learn how to communicate with one another and to support one another. And um, so it has it's just been a jumping off point from there, you know, of all the things that we've learned. It is it's impacted. And that's what I got to tell Hetty today is. What you started has impacted every aspect of my life. Come on, tell, tell me something about that. You you were saying that that it was, you had a great time with Hetty, and you you told her some of this, and I wanted you to share that on the podcast. Yeah. Was how how did it impact it? You, you were saying every aspect and in that kind of stuff. What what does that mean? It's everything. Well, it's uh, obviously from being a camper and seeing it, but even more, it was being on staff. And that's what I encourage a lot of campers is, um, yes, it's wonderful to be a camper, but it's nothing like getting to be on staff because the things that you learn on staff are the things that are really going to stick with you. Come on. Yeah, you come be a camper, you have fun, and you get to take that, but to be able to give that back. So, I mean, it's it's our parenting. It's how we learn to parent our children. It's how we get their attention. It's simple things like talking to a kid and getting their attention, getting down on their level, talking about it in a way that they understand. It's uh, introducing ourselves. We learned how, I don't know how to introduce myself to parents here. We learned, um, you know, just basic things about biblical womanhood and biblical manhood and what that looks like as a, as a man and as a woman. Uh, for Mitchell and I, it's, uh, like I said, our work ethic. It's our relationships, who we choose to be our friends and our community right now. Uh, it's because we've had these examples of these friendships that were deep friendships, not surface friendships, um, where we just talk about surface things. It's deep ones where we sh- share everything and share life and go through hard things together. It, so it's it's every aspect of our life. And so to get to to see Hetty and to tell her thank you, obviously I wouldn't have met Mitchell. You know, he was from Louisiana. I was from Arkansas. And uh, I'd, ne- I'd never had a boyfriend before, was not interested. These guys wow. just were not it for me. I was busy with sports and all the things. And But when I met Mitchell, it was something different. And I know it's because of what he learned. It's obviously who he was and what God had for me, but it's a big part of it is that he learned the same things that I learned, the things that I valued, we learned from Brookhill. Um, and and so to be able to connect with somebody who had the same values. So yeah, it's, it's impacted Every aspect of my life, and everything wow. that I do, even public speaking things, I learned how to do that at Brookhill. You know, Bible study. So I teach a Bible study now. I'm getting to be a part of a, a big Bible study where I've taught about six years and I have 300 women that we that I teach and 40 leaders that I teach. I, I wouldn't know how to do that without Brookhill. It started at morning devotions. It started in my cab and it started with sharing the gospel after crucifixion night. It's it's that's how I learned to study my Bible was giving morning devotions. So I learned to stand up and speak and teach the Bible, and that's why I'm doing it now. It started from there. So like I said, there's not an aspect. And two, my family, getting to take what I learned and share it with my family and for my family to be transformed in different ways from the truths that I had learned and uh, uh, and to see God's healing on my family. Like I spoke before, just 
that there was addiction in my family and for God to have healed that and Come to on. see my parents' marriage as a miracle. Wow. And I truly attribute, and my mom would say the same thing. My mom and dad would say the same thing of just so grateful for Brooke Hill because I think it uh, it kept me and saved me and that I didn't have to go down a path that, that wow. maybe was you know, a familial path, but because of Brook Hill. So, I mean, there's not a, there's not an aspect. It's like the sun has not, has touched everything in my life. And, um, so to say to Hetty, thank you, it just doesn't seem like enough, but, uh, so I encourage anybody to, to, to be on staff. We've told our boys, it might be mandatory for you, <laughs> you know, to come, especially being a JC, right. taking out the trash, doing sure. the things that seem like grunt work, but at the same time, it's so much fun. They make it so much fun to, to sweep the floor and to, to do things uh, and to do it for Christ. You know, that's what it is. And that's, yeah, everybody's jobs when you come mundane, no matter what you do, mm-hmm. if you have a wonderful job as a CEO, a pediatric dentist, a counselor, whatever, no matter what job you're in, at some point it becomes mundane. Sure. You're doing the day to day and it gets tired. But if you take the things that you've learned from Brook Hill, don't tire of repetition. You're doing this for Christ's sake. You know, this is this is really just your way of ministry. It's just what's in your hand right now and using it. And and so it's yeah, it's every aspect I could I could even imagine. I love it. I think it's so important to serve. You know, and I think that's what Brook Hill you know, my parents taught me work ethic and, and they you know, when you're at home, it, it, you know, so many parents say it. When, when kids come home, kids will echo things that we said here, and parents are like, I've, I've been, been trying to you tell that. you that. Yeah. And, but it's just something about having a place, yeah. an outlet that's theirs, right? Brook Hill's their experience. Oh, and to come and serve, and I love watching our junior counselors take out the trash, because I did that. Yeah. You did that. Yeah. And we both know what that did in us to yeah. not be selfish. Right. To do something so meaningless yeah. for someone else, right? And how much that teaches us—you, it, it, you, you cannot even quantify. You can't, and to watch them doing it, smiling, laughing, singing a song, bonding together while taking out the trash, you know, because I think uh, you know a lot of our the younger culture now, the way that they have um, just their culture is is it's uh, a lot about me. And a lot about what serves me. You know, we see that with hiring employees through our, you know, Mitchell's business. If, um, what am I going to get? What What are my benefits? You know. Right. Wow. Yeah. And it has to work for me. Mm-hmm. And so Mitchell and I are, feel like we're like coaching a lot of this young generation on, no, it's not, that's not how it works. It's you show up and you serve and you do it with a glad heart because it's not about you. Good. It's a, There's a bigger picture there. And so for young people to have an opportunity to learn that every parent should be signing their kids up to be mm-hmm. a JC. Just if that's all they do, even if it's just one year of being a JC one summer, but I, I say even more to stick with it. Cause the things that you learn are, um, they are countercultural in a lot of ways. And it's, it's so necessary right now from it's what true. we see the selfishness of some generations and being about me and hurting my feelings and offending me. You know, that was one thing, Stephen, I, I know I've talked about Stephen a lot cause he really poured into Mitchell and I, he was, Um, so important in our spiritual growth and development and and just having fun with him too and getting to know him as a friend. But, you know, it was, you you don't get offended. Right. You know, you have a choice to either take offense or not. And so somebody says something you don't like, that's your choice. And so just even that alone. So now we mentioned, I see people that get offended over little things. It's like, it just blows our mind because that's something we were trained and taught is how not to get offended and and that being a choice. And so, yeah, Stephen, Stephen definitely taught us that because, he might offend you every now and then, not on purpose. Um, he was but, doing uh, that just to help. Oh man, everything he did, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, I always felt like maybe I was his favorite, so I didn't, I didn't get offended very often. It's because uh, you were, maybe. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I did what I was. I just, I did it. I think that's, you know, any boss is going to appreciate somebody who, who does what they're supposed to do and does it with a glad heart. And it was a good fit for me, personality wise, too. I won't say that's not true. You were definitely a natural at it, but. You also got the vision. Yeah. You know, okay, this is what the vision is. Do it. I'm, I'm going to go and do that. Yeah. It's amazing how the boss likes you <laughs> right? when you do that. It doesn't take much, right, you know, if, you, if yeah. you do that. Yeah, I think Mitchell had some more life lessons. I won't talk too much about him because he's not here. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, his gear, he needed, he needed a little quicker gear. I we think are, it's so fun cause to be married to somebody like him because I am – a high strung and, and like not in like a you know negative way, oh, but yeah. uh, just um, I'm excited, let's go, easily let's go. ready, That's right. thinking about the next thing. And Mitchell's like cool, calm, collected, and so it's fun to be married to somebody you know where sometimes I will laugh at any joke. Mitchell just laughs. Is it funny? You know, is it <laughs> funny? He's laughing. If That's not, right. he's not laughing. I'm like, wow, you can do that. You That's can like right. not laugh at a joke. <laughs> That's right. So um, yeah, we were. It's 
But that's the cool part. And I, that was taught to us also is use what God gave you. Yeah. You know, there were kids that Mitchell could reach that I couldn't reach that sure. were probably freaked out by my loud personality. Right. Like, you were like this crazy person. Right. And it worked <laughs> for Mitchell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Mitchell could reach those. And we learned that too is use what God gave you. Don't try to be it's somebody good. else. And so, so I love true. that he is so, so him and he's so good for me in that way. But yeah, he's a lot more slow pace. If the cabin's on fire, he's like, everybody get out. You know, right. I'm freaking out. Right. Yeah. Making yeah. it a bigger deal than it has to be. So. That's so fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. So you met Mitchell yeah. here at camp, like you said, and you guys were working camp together. You know, it's it's always so tricky because obviously when you're young and you're in a relationship, uh, it takes a lot of work. And so, you know, for us here, we're not anti-relationship, we're anti-distraction. True. And so we're always just like be mature about it, which can be very difficult at a young age. Yeah. And, but you and Mitchell did it so, y'all were so good at being mature and leading. But but there was one particular weekend oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that you guys got this idea. Yeah. And I won't spoil a lot. I'll let you tell yeah. about y'all's road trip and then and then how you arrived a little late and how that went. Well, uh, yeah. So, you know, like you said, on the week, the, uh, during the week, we didn't talk. We were apart. We were focused on our kids and what we were doing. Or now we might sneak a little glance and a <laughs> wink, you know, and I would ask during camp parties, who do you think's dating? And, you know, little <laughs> do they know. But, um, yeah, so one weekend we decided we were going to go to uh, Six Flags. In Dallas, of course, which is what you do right. on your weekend. You've been right. working your tail off all week. You want to go to a theme park. Um, which so, we got out at like, what, four? I guess so. We we stayed at Mitchell's parents in Shreveport. And so that, that the day before we were supposed to come, or the day of, we were supposed to come back. We had gone to Six Flags. Um, and what happened was we decided, we went to Six Flags and we stayed in Shreveport that night with this family. We were driving back and we got into traffic. Oh. So normally they want you to stay, like stay and hang out and do, but we kind of just we were going to go do something fun that weekend so we'd gotten a bunch of traffic on the way from Shreveport back to to Brook Hill and um what happened was we were late for staff meeting mm. so everybody's in their red t-shirts and this time it was the the upper room or whatever mm. what was is it, it called was, it was the staff, the room. staff room it was the staff room um and so there's only one door in one door out there's no sneaking in the back and uh you know I we had texted Stephen and let him know and so I mean I I don't like to break rules it doesn't bother <laughs> Mitchell quite as much no. <laughs> I think Mitchell enjoys it. He maybe kind of a little bit, but I was like, oh no, I don't, you know, I don't want to do anything wrong. Um, so we didn't have time to even put our staff shirts on. So we roll up into staff meeting and that door opens and every head. <laughs> I was in the back. You were? Oh yeah, I was oh, there. I remember like, this moment. Oh, I felt so bad for you guys. Every head turned our way mm -hmm. and we had the walk of shame, mm -hmm. like Steven's on the chair, uh, the stool. Everybody's looking at him. We had to walk in between Stephen. <laughs> like they couldn't have left us some chairs no. on the back. It was mm -hmm. but probably everybody enjoyed it, like mm -hmm. glad to see it. <laughs> had to walk in front of Stephen over to the side and just it was silent. Stephen has a way of like, like I know he wasn't super mad at us, but he loves to like you know, make it a moment. That's right. He made it a moment where he, everybody watched us and we sat down and he looked at us and then he went on with what he was saying. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm like sweating. Oh my gosh. You know, sweating my hands the whole time. And then I, all I expected was to, you know, him to call us in the office and to get in trouble. And, um, and so after the meeting was over, he called us into the little office at the time. It was like Terry's office mm. and he sat us down and he just kind of looked at us and he was like, you know what I'm going to say? And we're like, yeah. He was like, all right. Did y'all have fun? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was really fun. He's like, all right, go get your shirts on. Oh, so happy that we didn't get in trouble. But I knew then I was like, Steven likes me. Yeah. Yeah, I want his good you, side. Well, yeah, so you know what everybody thought. What? It's because Maylee was there. Oh, well, for sure. If you if it had if been Mitchell? if it was Mitchell and Tim Barton. Oh. You know, or yeah. Mitchell and Bill yeah, or all three or whatever. For sure, Bill. Yeah. Oh, it would have been over. Yeah. But because Maylee was the, everybody's like, well, it's Maylie's, okay. Maylee's the well, favorite. Well, I was so glad. Ma I'm, Maylee's the favorite. I don't that, know that if was I was the, a favorite, but I knew Steven liked me because I, I try to do a good job. And he and I have similar personalities, a little bit of the ADD happening, <laughs> so I could like communicate with him on a level that he understood and I understood. But uh, yeah, I thought I might I might lose my job, but um, I was grateful that he understood, and we ran and got those red T-shirts on. I was never late again, <laughs> never late again to staff meeting. I'll never let that happen again. So, so any more ideas of going anywhere? You're like, nope, we're still. Oh right no, here. we were yeah, we were glued <laughs> glued for the weekend. But anyway, yeah, we giggle about. There's so many you know funny stories that happen and um, things that you just remember about each other and. You know, because a lot happens when you're at camp and sure. with kids, and kids are so funny, and 
uh, the mistakes you make and the good things you do. So you get to celebrate and then just a lot of laughing at each other for the, yeah. the dumb things that happen. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a good, a learning, a learning experience for me. That's awesome. Yeah. You were also the hodgepodge person. You know, Love hodgepodge that. was an activity that was real small until you took it over. And now, mind you, this is an activity usually out in the heat on the concrete playing right. random games. Right. And you took this thing from nothing. You know, I, I think one of the points of Brook Hill is it just takes a leader. You know, I right. think one of the major things is... It was there is, for the taking. Yeah, it, you know, because you would hear certain people say, well, this activity is a bad activity, or yeah. this cabin's a bad cabin. What's and, the reason for that? Mm, yeah, it's you. Make it happen. That's and that's it. the cool part about it, is that we we had the freedom and the opportunity. I learned to take initiative here. That was the thing, is that you you know, you know guys and Stephen were not on us all the time saying, go do this, go do this. There were certain things we had to meet up with, but then there was a lot of freedom to take our cabin and make it how we want, our activities. And so it was. It was like, this is an opportunity to have a really cool activity. I love a challenge, too. It's like, oh, it's, this is not cool. I'm going to make it cool. Even in adulthood, when I got a minivan, it was like, these Come aren't on. cool. We're going to make it cool. Come Put on stickers on it and a bike rack and so I like a challenge so yeah hodgepodge was one of those and um to make it an activity where kids wanted to come I want them in my activity I want them to come and have fun and so it's a chance for these counselors to take something be creative with it take initiative take ownership that's what everybody wants that's what every boss wants they want their employees to take initiative not to hold your hand and tell you how to do everything but please take it and make it better that's all we'd want for this uh, this product is take it and make it better. And so hodgepodge was one of those things that was really fun to think about ways to make it more random, more fun. How many more water balloons can we get at the time? Those poor JCs were filling up hundreds. Have you seen the new water balloon things that you can just hook up and they fill up like 80 yeah. water balloons at once? It has to be a JC that JC. was at Brook Hill that invented that. It has to be. Oh, must have been it, it, because it, if <laughs> not, like you filled up hundreds in a tiny with yeah. like a small little sink, spilling it everywhere. But I was one of those counselors that was like, we're filling a bunch of water That's balloons because right. kids love them. This could be fun. Whatever kind of food right. we can use and whatever product. We made a mess every week and uh, to where kids were, you know, switching over into that activity. And that's the best feeling when they're like, I heard hodgepodge was great. would come to hodgepodge or that I heard the percherons were the best cab. And that was the goal is you wanted it to be the best. And one of those kids, not for ego's sake, but because then you had a chance to get to know those kids. Then you that's had right. a chance to make it more fun for them. And, and you know, like we talked about before, you just don't know what these kids are coming with. You have no idea. Those counselors had no idea what I was coming with when I was a kid and they made it so much fun for me you said earlier a place for kids to come and be themselves that's right they can be themselves they can come and, and they don't have any there's no preconceived notion nobody knows their family history nobody knows the struggles they've had in school academically they can come completely free of that stuff and so to provide a space of just fun that they could go and do whether it was hodgepodge seems so silly like an activity hodgepodge but it means something and that's important to remember that it, they, it all means something. Even the downtime in between canteen, it was what counselor can have the most kids at their, we'd have that like that's competition. Right. Which counselor can have the most kids at their picnic table? Because you were doing the funnest game. That's right. You look over and you'd see like, oh, Mitchell Scott, a bunch of, these were mostly girls though yeah. at his table, <laughs> you know, I was like, that's okay. <laughs> but I, um, I had to get more campers than him. I had to be more fun because it was an opportunity to connect those kids, to make them come back. Like you said earlier, to hook them. Um, Cause I remember those counselors for, for me and, and I got to work with some of them and, they were heroes and still are heroes. And I know they're not perfect. You know, you have that moment when you leave Brook Hill where you're like, you still see him. And you're thinking like, I'm, you know, I'm just a regular person. You know, I remember one of my campers um, that, I mean, she just, it was a thing where they even had a group called Maleites. Such a weird what? experience. Yeah. Tell, tell me about this. Okay. So it was a group of girls that I'd had in my cabin and just connected with. And they were these great girls and got to spend a lot of time with them and just investing in them. And even throughout the year would try to, you know, see them or write them letters or things like that. And, and so they formed a group called Maleite. They had t-shirts that say like Maleite on the back. And they'd send like, I still have a photo album of them like doing silly poses we would do with Maleites on the back. And, um, you know, and so it's just, it's, it's amazing to see these kids that, you know, want to be like you, but then you leave Brooklyn and think, man, I hope I don't, hope I don't disappoint anybody. Sure. Hope I don't let anybody down. And so you'd see them, 
outside of camp experience and and realizing that you you aren't because it's it's who you are. It's because you love God. It's not because of the right. crazy, funny costumes you wear. And it's because they love you because they love that God inside of you. And so that's a fun experience to then be grownups with that other camper now and to see them in our hometown now and be in Sunday school with some of them and Come still on. see campers. I've, I've got one of my campers in my Sunday school class and see them all the time. And it's it's so much fun to get to do real life with them as adults who are now we're parents and uh, that it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm not that, I have to be loud and crazy for you to like me. It was, no, they, they love the Jesus in me, and that's the, that's the part that stuck with them. I love that. And, you know, I love that competitive spirit. And, 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 you know, obviously there's a fine line to where you're trying to draw the crowd to make it about you. But I love it because I feel like it's the counselors fighting for the kids. Yeah. Like, I'm fighting for you. I want your attention. And those kids feel that. And it's the opposite usually in the world where kids are like, someone give me attention. And right. when you come to Brook Hill and you have these counselors, yeah. you know, really, really cute example. This last week, my nephew came to camp. His name is Ben, and he was a day camper. And, and Ben, he came, he came in the door one night. And he said, um, guess what? He said, because my aunt and uncle run Brook Hill, all the counselors are showing me favoritism. All the counselors are doing that. And what he doesn't understand is, buddy, they, they don't know who you are, uh, yeah. but they're competing for you. Yeah. You know, they want, and if we would have a culture of leaders Man, yeah. that would compete and fight, fight for, for, these the, kids. for these kids, Instead for the next the, generation, for the people in their yeah. workplace, you know, but that, that's taking it off of me, yeah, right? And, and it's putting it on, I, I'm living life for other people. Right. I love that. Yeah, I, we I, had the same conversation in the car. It was so funny because... A uh, counselor waved at Rivers. He's like, I wonder, he totally remembers me. And I'm like, maybe, but just remember, <laughs> you know, that they see hundreds of kids and you might get a hey buddy or a hey right. girl. You know, I remember those moments. We'd see kids, um, you know, at like the mall at, on the weekends or whatever, and they would run up. To, I mean, you thought you were a celebrity because they'd run up to you with these big yeah. wide eyes. You had so no true. clue who these no. kids were. No. But at this, you know, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to definitely pretend like I remember you and That's know right. you and hey girl, oh, my sweetie, whatever it was. But, to, that's amazing. That's for these kids to really feel that when they come here and to, oh, they remember me. They know me. And a lot of times they do, but most of the time they don't. You're, oh, there's a lot of kids here, but that, that kids don't feel like a burden. They don't feel like they want to be shoved apart so that they can go have their adult time. It's, um, they feel valued. They feel seen. It's better than any therapy you could pay for. I'm telling you, as a counselor, as a counselor, it, as a counselor as in a my counselor. profession, Come on. this is this is more important than anything we could do for these kids. Wow. To make them feel valued, to have somebody listen. And that's what the coaches do and youth pastors. That's why they're such a huge impact on their players, coaches, because mm -hmm. it's not your parents. Like you said, my mom said the same thing. I've been telling you that the whole time. You're just now hearing it. And that's true. You have to because it, you hear it differently from somebody else. You hear it differently from somebody um, that's outside of your family. It's almost like your parents are supposed to say that. But to have this cool college kid mm -hmm. who is so much fun, look me in the eye and value me and care about what color is my favorite color and cool. my dog's name, that's better than any therapy you could pay for. They're sitting on the dock listening to their life struggles and like I said before, you have no idea what these come, kids come for. There'd be times that we'd hear kids that are, their parents going for, through tough divorces wow. or they, you know, are in foster care or what. You just had no clue. They all had the same name tag. Mm -hmm. They all were there looking the same. But um, that's something that I've learned, too, is just you never know what's going on with somebody. Somebody treats you ugly. You have no idea what's going on with them. You think There's twice about reason. it. There's, There's always, always a reason. There's always a reason. And I think when we can... Get the focus off of they treated me bad. Right. To what's going on with them to make oh, them yeah, feel this way. That's right. They learn that from camp. No one purposefully does that. Right. I, you know, I just don't believe that. I, I don't I think either. there's a reason. Yeah. Well, it's all about getting outside yourself. That's the, the main thing about working at, at Brook Hill was uh, just learning. And even my relationship with God, God doesn't need me. He wants me and loves wow. me. That's good. So that, that's a whole different relationship with God right there. And that, yeah. that comes from the core of what I learned at Brook Hill is, um, is it just, you know, that I don't have to be anything for anybody except for just loving that person. They don't have to be anything Come for on. me, just loving that person and, and, and it not being about me. Somebody does something ugly. It's not about me. What What's going on with them? These kids are the same way. Sometimes you have tough kids. 
you know, sometimes I wonder if they'd put the tough kids in my cabin. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I think they might have known, or maybe God, you know, God obviously did it, but um, it started to jumpstart my counseling career. But <laughs> it, it is what they get here. If you you want to get your kid in therapy, you know, not that they're like practicing, you know, psychology sure. on them, but in terms of listening and valuing and just simple things like asking questions and looking them in the eye, it's life-changing and life-giving. So as a professional counselor, not, not like as a Brookhill counselor, but as a licensed professional counselor, those are some of the big things that you're taught and trained in, oh, yeah. like in college and different things. Absolutely. Is, like what are some of like listening? I think that's interesting to try and quantify what you're talking about. Yeah. There. Well, I mean, it's from basic classes in, in your ma- in my master's program. It has to do with nonverbals. You start off with things like that. Learn that at Brookhill. Wow. Learn to squat down to talk to a kid. We're wow. eye to eye. I did that today. Right. It makes a huge today. difference. I drop down. You Keith's drop kid. down. Yeah. You look at them in the eye. That's right. I learned that at Brookhill. You know, things like, um, active listening so a kid's talking to you doesn't matter what they're talking about you're engaged and you're listening and not just listening to what they're saying you're listening for the message behind it great so a kid's talking to you about something you're listening for what's behind this message and asking questions to find out more not because i'm doing therapy with somebody but because i want to share god with them in that space so that's what we learn in in our master's program what you learn in counseling is how to, to be an active listener how to be empathetic how to um read nonverbal of kids. We learned that at Brookhill. You see a kid in the corner with his arms crossed. What were we taught? We were taught to go, go seek that kid that's out, it. right? That's it. Same thing in counseling. You learn those nonverbals. You've got a kid that's sitting in a corner with their arms crossed. They're struggling. What can I do? How can I bring them out? Um, and like I said before, of just the art of playing. You know, there's play therapy. There's an actual thing mm-hmm. where you use play through therapy. You know, the kids are playing and you're talking to them. You're doing the same thing at Brookhill. Wow. They're preoccupied with something else, but you're talking to them about life and, and doing those things. So it's, uh, you know, it's, this, it's, it's everything that we've learned, um, you know, minus some of the theoretical things. But it's sure. um, working with kids and adolescents as a professional counselor is, is a lot of the things that I learned as a senior counselor at Brookhill. I love hearing that, cool. you know, because this is what I've always done. You know, right. I mean, I, I was a Brookhill counselor and I'm, I'm still a Brookhill counselor. It's what <laughs> I've always done. So I love hearing, you know, someone like you who is accomplished and is, you know, done all this stuff. You know your stuff when it comes to that. And I love hearing that we're naturally, you know, doing that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, doing it, so. doing it right. And, and that's why kids come back. That's why you have kids come back like me, you know, from the third grade on. Um, you know, and Mitchell too, and love you. He, he was invited by a kid, uh, in the sixth grade and that he came to camp with that kid and that kid never came back. You know, almost like he brought Mitchell to camp, you know, and just, um, and just to, that you keep coming back because of what you get here. Yes. The activities are so much fun. Um, uh, that's not why kids come back. There's many, many camps that are awesome and have great activities. Maybe even some that are even nicer. I don't know, but, uh, they come back and it's it's special and that's what it's fun to be a mom. So I've enjoyed being on this side of being a mom with campers. And you know, all three of my boys come to camp now and to get to talk to other moms about their experience. I'm kind of like a secret spy. Like, yeah. how was your experience? What did you think? What did you like? What would you like to see different? You know, and relay messages to you guys. And it's always positive. But what I hear the most is it they don't want to go to this camp anymore because this camp's different. Mm-hmm. It's the spiritual aspect of Brookhill that makes kids want to come back. Come on. It's the, it's the counselors as well. It's the amount of time you guys put into training counselors um, that the kids love those counselors because of that. And Mitchell and I have become so picky when it comes to different things that we do. Now that we go to either functions or camps or things, we're like, That's, Brookhill doesn't do it this way. <laughs> you know, they, they, they were at Brookhill, they would have done it this way. Because you guys got it. You got a hold of that vision, understanding. If you pour into your staff, then they're going to pour into the kids. That's right. You know, and you spend your time discipling these young men and women who are on your staff, that's going to make your product even better. And the product being, you know, lifelong learners and, and followers of Christ. And so to see that, that's the difference. So it's fun to be a, a parent and to hear those stories. And I know I've texted you just friends of our kids who have salvation, you know, and um, life-changing things that they've gotten to experience. And, and even friends who've said, you know, we're probably not going to go to this camp anymore. I think we're going to stick with Brook Hill Come on. because of that difference. And that's that's the hope, the hope that when things get really hard, when you guys go through a year like COVID and you push through and made the adjustments and were flexible and made it work, it's worth it. You know, it's worth all the tough things these senior counselors face, whether it's heat or exhaustion, or there's some of them are trying to figure out their future. Mm-hmm. And here they are at Brook Hill Ranch as a summer camp counselor. And like, should I go to med school? Should I go do this? 
but they're spending their time here because of the important things that they get and they're better off because of it. Because of it. And this is that equipping center that's going to take them uh, to doing you know better in whatever field that they are. They can take it with them wherever they go. Come on. I want to shift gears a minute. Uh, you were, uh, let's talk about the two week. Yes. Your kids are at the two week right? and um, you were a lifelong two weeker. That's what you did yeah. from start to finish. Mm-hmm. And of course you were on staff. So you were at one weeks and two weeks and we brought it back this year. Yes. And I know you're definitely one of the cheerleaders for oh, that. Oh man. You're one of the advocates for that. Yeah. For many reasons. And tell me what you love about the two week. I know it's new. So I know we got parents that are, it's going to be new for them to understand even what's the difference. And in, in obviously the one week is great. You know, Brook Hill's oh, great regardless. Yeah, absolutely. The two week like takes that same heart that we pack into a week and we spread it out over two weeks and it's got some extra stuff. It does. It has, it's, it's, there's something special about it. You know, at, at a young age, I, I think it was maybe you had to be fourth grade or fifth grade to come to a two week session. So I, my mom would send me to two separate weeks. <laughs> I was one of those kids that were like, Oh, you're back. I'm like, yeah, loved it. Didn't care. <laughs> sure. Same magic for me. Um, but the two week session was different. It was special. There is, you know, obviously a more amount of time to, to get to connect with these kids and also for them to connect with one another. As soon as I could go to two week, I went because I couldn't get enough of that experience and those relationships. And there's extra fun, whether it's in you know, the Olympics and making hobo dinners. And and um, like I said, those bonding experiences that you go through with other people. And, and so there would be kids that we would see every single week. That was another fun thing is we knew who was coming to the two week. I knew my friends were coming to the two week. Mitchell being one of those that came to the two week every single year and and, um, and getting to connect to the counselors, there was even more time that those counselors and as a counselor got to pour into those kids. You know, those girls that were Maleites, they were two-week campers. You know, the ones that I really bonded and connected with, they were there for two weeks. Because think about that. You're two whole weeks with kids with no distractions and nothing but fun and conversation and uh, time to talk and really dig into it. And and just the development that went on inside of me as a camper, as well as the, the changes that happened as a counselor, getting to push through the tough things about going, you know, we didn't get a lot of breaks and it was it was a hard, you know, at the time we did camp out, we were putting up tents and having kids <laughs> chop vegetables and I mean, smelling so bad and going to the porta potty and at Olympics, you're losing your voice, but how to press through um, to do things for other people and how to serve. That's just a, such a changing thing, but two weeks special. Yeah. And, you know, even so this weekend we get together every single year with our friends that were, most of them were two week count, uh, campers cool. and then the counselors that we were with, we have a, a group of couples that we see every single year and they're friends unlike any other friends. It's true. You know, you, you go through things, you experience things with them and, and, and so that's just a, a treasure, just a gift. And, and I still have letters that we wrote to each other. I have letters from Mitchell that he wrote me. Come Even on. one of them, it's like... I don't believe it. I don't, I don't, get, I don't it, believe that Mitchell wrote know, a letter. It's true. That's effort. I, I just don't... Right. <laughs> I, I don't believe. True. And I never wrote him back, which was the hard... I know. Ooh. I know. It just, like I said, That's I knew... Surprising. I liked him, but I was just like busy, got things going on. And he would even <laughs> write like, in case you forgot my address, here it is. It was so cute. Because um, that's got to be why you haven't written right, me back. Right. Why else would you yeah, not? Because he's forgot, so yeah. cute and so great and had all the girls liked him, but... But, um, uh, you know, it was a, uh, it was just fun to stay connected throughout the year. And, um, and then Turkey Day, we all the two, we, we just knew each other. You Come were a back big to Turkey, Turkey Day. Oh, yeah. Anytime Brook Hill was open, I wanted to Come be on. here. I wanted to be here because it was, it was a place and still is a place where you just feel um, God's presence um, reconnected. It's so much fun as an adult too, just to drive up on the campus and just feel the Holy Spirit. Because you know, as a, as a grown up, it's easy to get bogged down with life things, sure. the worries of life and businesses and relationships and hard things that come. Especially last year, right? With all that happened last year and trying to keep businesses going and um, kids out of school and what's going to happen in the future. But to be able to to drive up on this this beautiful place and and just remember, like, man, it's about God. Mm-hmm. It's about God and God's got us. He's in control. It's just like those great refreshers. And I was talking to my boys too about, you know, we always heard about the Brook Hill High and, um, you know, how when you come home from camp, you just feel really fired up. And, and I just said, man, guys, that's not a bad thing. We all need that. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. We all need to, to be refreshed, to be fired up and, and to feel excited about God again. And, and so even just being here is it just, you remember, 
you remember a lot of those things about yourself that uh, sometimes adulthood takes away and you forget about, you know, just those so great, wonderful things about, about who God is inside of you. And so that two week was just really special. I'm so glad you guys are doing it again. Yeah. My boys are here. My two oldest boys are here for the first two week uh, since I was a counselor. And um, it's been fun as I walked around to the, the, different cabins, putting our boys up and asking the senior counselors, are you guys excited? And they have like a little bit of fear, but like really yeah. excited. Oh, they're excited. Just like the campers, you know, they can't wait. They don't know what's yeah. coming. Well, it's been since 2008. That's crazy. And yeah. I, it's a, uh, it's such a treat. These guys are, they're going to want to do it every single year. Oh, yeah. And these campers are going to want to come back every single year. It's, it is, it's just, it's not only is it more fun and because there's more time to have more fun, but it's the deep connection that you get to make really solid um, discipleship that happens among these two weeks which is yeah. which is awesome. I love Brook Hill Church. I mean, there's something about having church at Brook Hill, worship, and everybody's dressed up. Oh, and... yeah. So fun seeing your friends dress up. You're yeah. not totally sweaty and disgusting. And I have a picture of Mitchell and I at Brook Hill Church, and uh, I have it framed in my room. Um, but it, it's... You know, Mitchell and I learned how to worship here. Sure. You know, coming from maybe more, um, yeah, I come from traditional, traditional churches. Was great, was just great, but to be able to find freedom in worship, sure. other options of worship, sure. um, to really have the freedom to tap in, and um, that that was uh, that changed us too, and and how we look for churches as adult to be able to say, you know, that that kind of church is what you want. If, um, just that life-giving church and that life-giving worship. There's, worship is the best part of church, just getting to really you know, dig in and worship and sing and um, in that kind of way. So, yeah, Brook Hill Church is super fun. And uh, and like I said, just all the activities and things they do, just uh, even more connection and more time to be with one another makes it special. I love that. Hey, but before we go, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want to talk a little bit about the BCF yeah. because I, I know you've helped us uh, start this new. You've been a part of the different alumni that have helped us start this new uh, deal. And, and, you know, of course, we started in 2020 and okay. parents didn't get to go to close the ceremonies. So we didn't really get to introduce it. We sort of got it off the ground. And, uh, you know, this year, parents were starting to tell them what, you know, what we're doing. And yeah, I don't know if you want to share a little yeah, bit about that. And Yeah, well, it's, uh, Mitchell and I both had the opportunity um, these past two years to be on the board of Brook Hill alumni. That's the best part about it. It's Brook Hill alumni who have a heart for Brook Hill. Um, and it's just Brook Hill doing even more. It's been neat to see Brook Hill reaching out of, of just not just what we're doing here at camp, but what else can we do for our community, for That's other right. communities, for other kids, um, giving options to do that. And so Brook Hill Children's Fund is an opportunity. It's a nonprofit for uh, anybody to be able to give and those funds go straight to benefiting children whether that service projects or scholarships for those who may not be able to afford to come to Brook Hill or um, maybe certain projects among Brook Hill campus that we want to see happen and it's just exciting to be able to I mean obviously a, a place that gives so much to you you want to be able to give back in sure. a way and so it's been so neat for Mitchell and I to get to um, first of all see our friends faces you know a couple yeah. times a month and our meetings but to be able to give back and that Brook Hill's impact, it's worldwide. That's the, the best part about it as it's, it's not just Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's, there are kids here from Maryland and Pennsylvania and all over the world. And then through Brook Hill Children's Fund, it's being able to take that and go to cities that need help or missions or, um, yeah, for a kid to, who maybe would never be able to come to camp to get a, a partial scholarship and come get on. to come for one time could change the entire, uh, you know, path of their life that alone just makes it so exciting so yeah we've had a booth um during closing ceremonies that the, the alumni on the board have, have got a chance to go stand there and share with people and easy ways to give we have venmo and paypal and on Brook Hill's website, you can um, click on a link just to, to see more about it. Lindley's got a great video just sharing more about the Brook Hill Children's Fund and what it is. And the neatest thing, too, is Amazon Smiles. That's, that's my favorite. Yeah. Because you don't even have to give to it. It is. It's we super all easy. all over Amazon. Oh, my goodness. The amount of boxes. I won't say who it is, but <laughs> the amount of boxes that come to our door. And so, yeah, you can just go on Amazon and you you click to look. I think it says Find Charity. You type in Brook Hill Children's Fund and you make that your charity. So every single time that you shop on Amazon, which for me, it's like, oh, I need batteries. Amazon's where sure. I go to. Absolutely. It's so, gosh, I feel so bad sometimes. I'm like, I just ordered batteries on Amazon <laughs> instead of going to the store where there's pickup everywhere right. now. But right. that way they can. But you have to actually drive. Yeah, right. Store, it's just but, so hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but it's not even so you're not even giving it's it's amazon gives awesome. back every time that you purchase something amazon gives to to that charity and so it's just kind of a no-brainer way to do that and so we hope people will um just kind of want to get the word out since it's new and kind of started during the year of covid and so it was a little bit of a slower start but it's neat to see um, applications come in for scholarships and get to read these applications and uh, we pray you know I pray over every single sure. name that I can and um, just not knowing what God's going to do just like with Mitchell or with me you know somebody invited us and we came and it changed our entire lives so um, you know, we'd love for people just to to learn more about it and to be able to give to it and to know that you know, yeah, maybe you're not here as a counselor. Maybe you were a counselor and you're an alumni, but this place has done so much for you. This is a great way to be able to give back. I love that. Well, maybe I, I've loved talking with you. And, you know, our favorite thing is that this is the beginning for our counselors, for our campers, that our goal is for their future. Right. And to see you and Mitchell, to see your family, we just, we love it. And, you know, we want to, we want to get you back on here with Mitchell and Make him get on here, maybe maybe Melissa and I too. Well, I'd love and, it. We'd have fun. And I just uh, we just want to highlight the incredible lives because the idea is that Brook Hill continues even after you're a camper, even after you're a counselor. This is the foundation. So I've loved connecting with you and just to know that you're still a counselor. You know yeah. whether it's with your kids, whether it's uh, in your profession or, or what have you. And I absolutely love that. I appreciate you coming on with us oh, today. Thank you so much, and thank you guys for all that you do and and. Just what wonderful summers that keep going. It's it's cool to have a, something constant in this world, and Brook Hill's one of those things. It's God's work, and uh, yeah, I just appreciate it. It does. It just brings a tear to my eye to think about awesome. um, just how much Brook Hill's changed my life forever, and, and it's God's work. It's You guys are a vessel for God's work, so thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. Thank you, David. All right, we'll see you.